I really don't think that it's a coincidence that the word dying comes at the end of studying, um, because it's pretty much what it feels like is happening to you when you're trying to do it. Studying sucks. There's, there's no way I can make it sound like it's wonderful. All of us teachers who have gotten degrees have had to do it, and we don't like it either, uh, speaking in generalities. But there are some ways to make studying a little bit easier and not as painful, which is the goal of this. Uh, gee, can you tell I wrote this PowerPoint since I just said all this stuff? Um, the weird thing is that everybody expects us to study and everybody expects us to know how to study, but nobody ever teaches us how to study. So it's kind of the goal is to just give you some guidelines to get you through it. So uh, the first thing is what, what, what do I study? I have no idea what to study. Um, anything that it happens in class is fair game. Handouts, PowerPoints, lectures, examples, questions, um, discussion boards, online activities that you've done, they are always fair game. So anytime you're absent, this is why it's imperative that you get the stuff that you missed. So when you're absent, this is why you need to get in touch with your instructors so that you can get copies of PowerPoints. Um, you should also get notes from at least two different classmates because everybody takes notes differently. So one student might miss something, the second one didn't. Um, so you need to study anything. Anything's fair game. Places where to study. <laughs> um, a lot of this is like real estate. It's location, location, location. So... Good places to study are the ones where you are uncomfortable. Um, so studying in the kitchen at the kitchen table is good, unless you are like me, and when you study in the kitchen, you then tend to roam to the refrigerator and eat so that you don't have to study. Um, studying at a desk uh, on a actual desk chair is good to do. Studying on the floor, but sitting uh, with your legs crossed as opposed to laying either flat on your back or flat on your stomach is good. Going to the library, um, going, to, going out on your porch or sitting in the backyard at a picnic table, uh, going to the park or staying at school. Um, if you are just a little uncomfortable while you're studying, then you will actually stay awake because... How many of you have sat in the comfortable, uh, sat on the comfortable couch with the TV playing, or in your nice cushy warm bed, or you sat in one of those papazon chairs, which I love. I call them the bowl chair. That um, you sit in the middle, and no matter which way you look or move, there's a pillow surrounding you, uh, and you fall asleep every single time, and then you wake up and you have not studied. Um, the floor can also be a place not to study because, like I said, if you're laying on your stomach or if you're laying on your back, you're going to have a tendency to fall asleep, especially if you make the floor comfy with pillows or I had one student who used to uh, sit in a beanbag chair or surrounded themselves in their kids' sleeping bags while they studied on the floor and it didn't work very well. Uh, so you want to actually put yourself in a place where you're not very comfortable. You also don't want to have the TV playing. So sometimes it's good to study with other people and sometimes it isn't. Um, if you're going to study in a group, study with the people you know are going to keep you on task. Because otherwise it just turns into a social event um, and you guys end up chatting about anything and everything except the stuff that's on the test. Two hours have gone by and you've gotten nothing accomplished. So either study with people who are going to keep you focused and push you or study by yourself. Especially if you find that you are the one pushing everybody else and you get sick of it, then stop studying in groups. But a lot of the time studying with a partner can be really beneficial because they may understand a concept in a different way than you do. 
um, and can explain it in a different way than a teacher might have, um, and it might sit with you a little bit better. Uh, you should not be waiting until the night before a test to cram information. Um, in my classes, students have to read uh, chapters out of textbooks and things like that, handouts that they've been given before a test. And I hate when I'm going to give a test on Monday at 8.30 and on Sunday at 5 in the afternoon, I have a student emailing me about which pages they need to read. Those pages should have already been read a week ago. The earlier that you start studying, it allows you to get to the teacher sooner to ask questions about material you don't understand. Um, it allows you to plan ahead, and it actually helps you take better notes, which we're going to talk about in, um, I think, the reading the textbook PowerPoint. So. It seems a little weird, but you really want to make a schedule of when you're going to study so that you can look over small pieces of information over, uh, you want shorter time frames over more days rather than one day of eight hours of studying because you're not going to be productive. So you don't want to study for more than two hours at a time. The average adult attention span is about 20 minutes. So if you keep yourself to two hours, then that at least seems manageable and you know that you can get through it and that there's an end to it. And you also want to study when you're most productive. Some people are morning people, uh, some people are, are night people and get more done at night after nine, or some people are better when they are uh, right after dinner, whatever. Um, but you shouldn't stay up all night cramming because you really need to get your rest. Um, if you don't get that six continuous hours of sleep, you're not going to retain any of the information that you studied. Um, so how long do I study? Or basically, when the heck can I stop? I love the cat in the bottom left corner because that's how I usually feel all the time. Um, you can stop studying when you're confident you know the material. And that doesn't just mean that you go, oh yeah, I know this, and you shut the book and you're like, I don't really think I know this. But if you can teach someone else the information, if you can put the information in your own words, if you can have a conversation about it, and if you can ex even test yourself on it, then you are ready to stop studying. There is such a thing as overstudying. Um, so these are these four points are really good ways to check if you're ready to stop studying or not. Um, some students create their own tests and make them actually harder than some classroom tests are to see if they know the information. Um, and sometimes some of your textbooks will come with online study materials and you can take practice tests there and see how you do. So here's how you study. Um, you need to review the notes that you took in class. You can, again, take practice tests or write your own. Rewriting notes is helpful. Drawing or tracing diagrams is also very helpful for the hands-on learners. Some people like to put the information to music in their head or they create other kinds of mnemonic devices where they might um, create a mnemonic device is a tool that you use to remember something. So if you think of the colors of the rainbow, everybody usually immediately says Roy G. Biv. That's a mnemonic device so that you remember it's red, orange, yellow, blah, 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 blah. Um, a lot of students like to make flashcards, but then they don't use them. So if you're going to make flashcards, if you remember from when we were little or if your kids are little, play memory with them. So put one, like the word or the concept or whatever, on one side of the card and then put information on the other side of the card and use them to match and play memory with them. So if you actually play a game with those flashcards, they might end up to be more useful than just writing them and going, all right, I wrote them, now what? Uh, talking the information out loud is helpful. Listening to music while you're studying can be helpful, but listen to music that you don't know the words to. Um, so classical is common, 
or another kind of music genre that you never listen to. Because if you listen to music and you know the words to the songs, you're going to end up singing the songs instead of studying. Um, for my other kinesthetic learners, walking around while you're studying can be helpful. Um, pacing and moving your body can help you retain the information instead of just sitting in one spot. So, studying is boring. That's why I said break this up over several days and make sure that you take breaks. Um, if you're studying and all of a sudden you're drifting and making the grocery list and thinking about what you're going to do next week or what you're going to wear to school tomorrow or your head drifts at all, that's your cue to stop. Because if you try and push through that, you're not going to retain anything. Um, so that's the time where you need to stop. Um, in the upper right corner, I had said go for two minutes, two hours, and make that be your limit. Uh, the suggestion in the upper right corner in the black picture says studying for 30 to 50 minutes at a time with a 10-minute break in between is the most effective way. So, again, because of that attention span, if you study for an hour and then you take a break and then you go back for an hour, you're going to be able to stay focused and retain more than if you just try and spend eight continuous hours torturing yourself. So the thing is, I mean, if like I said at the beginning, nobody really teaches us how to study, but everyone expects us to know how to do it. So if you don't know how to study, you're not stupid come talk to one of us and we can give you some tips. And the thing is sometimes, again, this will be trial and error until we find something that really, really works for you. Um, praying won't always work. Lighting candles won't always <laughs> work. Uh, creating voodoo dolls of the teachers doesn't always work. So unfortunately, you gotta study. Um, but we can help you do that if you need some more tips. So I hope that this was helpful. And we'll figure it out as you keep going through more classes.